Now I have a question for some of you veteran tires out there. What can we tie with a coyote mask and a coyote tail? Now this has nothing to do with the fly I'm about to tie today, but I really want to know. I have no idea what we can tie with this stuff, but it's some pretty cool material. So please leave a comment if you have any ideas at all. What's up everybody? Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So I did something kind of fun this morning. I asked out there on the community forum, uh, what fly would you like to see me tie today? And I got all kinds of great responses. George said do a honey bug. David said a mop fly. Michael P said do an alder fly if you can find one with an antenna. Peter said do a bread crust. Now that really caught my attention because I've wanted to tie bread crust for a long time. Not going to do it today because it takes a while to prepare that feather, but thank you for the recommendation, Peter. It's definitely on the list. Chris said do a San Juan worm. Jim said small black stonefly. Neil Cox said do a winged wet fly. Well, Neil, we've got a couple of winged wet flies on here. Check out the Watson's Fancy or the Cow Dung. Both of those will, will give you some tips on how to do a, a old school wing on a wet fly. But the one I decided to go with came from Brian Feeney and Michael O'Brien. It was a tungsten surveyor. Now I had vaguely heard of this pattern, so I had to look it up and I, I learned it was a Lance Egan pattern. We've talked about Lance on the channel. We've tied his Frenchie. He's just a, a legend in the competition fly fishing world. And this fly has two of the characteristics I love in a fly. It's easy to tie and it just looks like it's gonna catch fish. So it's a really cool pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, Lance Egan's Tungsten Surveyor. Now I'm tying this on a size 16. This is a 2X long nymph hook. And if you take a look at this hook, it's not the ones I use most often. This is a, a fire hole, I think 618. It's a competition. So I think that competition means it's just got the point going in. Now that's a 2.4 millimeter tungsten bead. And I'm going to use some wraps of 015 weight. This is the thinnest stuff I have, and it's really doesn't need much extra weight, but this is just going to help hold that bead in. So a good five or six wraps should be fine. Let me see, make sure I get that one looking okay, and just jam that up there in your bead. Okay, that's going to be okay. Now, red thread. Pattern does call for a red thread and pretty thin stuff. This is a size 16 hook, so I'm gonna just build a little dam behind it so I can taper it down. A few wraps over the top to really lock it in. Now you could also tie this on a jig hook. I saw several of them online tied on a jig hook, and I only had some jigs in size 14, and my slotted tungsten beads, they weren't sitting on it very well, so I'm gonna tie this on a standard, standard nymph hook. And it's going to be just as, just as cool of a pattern. Okay, so take your base down to, oh, about where the, the barb would be. And we're going to tie in the tail. I've also seen this as, as being optional, but I'm going to use some pheasant tail fibers here. That's what the original pattern calls for. So just take three or four of these guys. These right here, you see they're kind of stuck together. So what I'll do to break them up, just roll them in my, my fingers a little bit. And it's not going to be a long tail. That's three right there. So I think that's going to be fine right there. Just a couple of wraps. Catch it in. And I'm going to use some of this, these fibers right here to help smooth out this base right there. That's certainly optional because we're putting a big, fat, fuzzy body on this guy anyway. But before we do that, let's tie in a rib. I'm using a small wire and silver. Pattern does call for silver. I'm sure you can get away with gold or copper if that's all you got. So let's catch this in on, I'm gonna do it on the near side of the hook here, all the way back. All right, and then smooth this little spot right there. I've got a rabbit nipping at my toes right now. You guys can't see that, I don't know if you could hear him, but uh, he's, crawling all around my my uh, bench here all right so when you got your rib in put some wax on your thread the coolest part of this fly I think is this dubbing it's a rainbow souse gud dub this stuff right here say that seven times fast rainbow souse gud dub 
If you don't have this, it's some pretty neat stuff. Um, it's not the easiest dubbing material to work with. So it's, it's pretty long fibers. See this stuff right here? But I'm gonna put a pretty generous portion on, fairly thick noodle. And you'll see what I'm talking about when, uh, when I start wrapping this. It, it doesn't necessarily wanna stay on your thread. You could do it with a dubbing loop, but I think that's a little more work than, than this fly warrants. So I'm gonna take some wraps until the dubbing starts to catch now, I can pull it down and spin it just a little bit tighter. And don't worry if it's big and fuzzy right now. That's why I've got a rib. Rib will really lock it in. And I've got a big chunk coming off right there, so I'm gonna just try and wrap this around right there. Now is that enough? Mm, I think I want to go just a little bit more. Okay, that's certainly buggy and fuzzy enough. Now I'm going to counter wrap this rib right here. And put them pretty close together because you really want to lock this dubbing down. Otherwise, after half a dozen fish or so, this fly will be worn out. Okay, that's close enough right there, those wraps were. Now, one trick, and I think Lee mentioned this, and I forgot to do it on the last fly. When you're counter wrapping a wire rib, it's you're wrapping it the opposite way your thread is. So maybe you want to leave it on the top and then take your thread up and go over it and then back down. So now I've reversed my thread wraps right there. I'll take a wrap or two right here and then do it again. Reverse my thread again. And now you've really locked that wire in. A couple extra wraps just to lay it flat. You can put some tension on your thread. Now you helicopter this off. And that wire is not gonna unwind on you. So nifty little trick if you do a lot of counter wrapping with a wire rib. Okay, so next component, pearl tinsel. Just a little flashback, a little wing case. Now I would consider this optional. The pattern does call for it. So I'm gonna put it in, at least for the sake of, of this tie. So just a loose wrap right there and I'll pull it back so I don't have as any to trim right there. And several wraps back. Okay, that's how much we're gonna have right there. Now we're gonna put some orange dubbing on. Some big, fuzzy, synthetic, orange, spiky dubbing. If you've got another Sal Scud dub in orange, by all means, go for it. I did not, so I'm using this ice dub right here. It's an orange ice dub, and it looks pretty much the same. So put a, a generous noodle on right here. It doesn't have to be long, but, you know, you want it a little bit fat. So let's see how much this does for us. Is that gonna get us all the way up to the bead? Sure, that looks fine right there. Now let's fold this little pearl tinsel over. A Couple of wraps to lock this. Now snip this one off. So you see that? You can't really see that much of that, that pearl flash right there. That's why I would call this optional. If I was sitting down to tie a dozen of these, by all means, leave it out. That's exactly what I would do. And I'm not going to use head cement. I'm just going to do two three-turn whip finishes. And you might see a little bit of red, and that's fine. You could just consider that a hot spot. But really, the orange is, is pretty much your hot spot. So I'll just put, put some tension on my thread put my scissors up there and slice it off. So there you go. You could trim that up. We could do a little cleanup, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna put it in my box just like this. So there you go, Lance Egan's Tungsten Surveyor. Pretty cool looking pattern, very easy to tie, and I'm sure this is gonna be a big time fish catcher. So that's it everybody, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, we'll see you next time.